This is the story, exactly the way it was told to me. Officer Angela Barrett had been told by her chief to interview some guy that used to be a hotshot in the FBI, since retired. But still, Chief Potter thought that he could help. He'd read about this guy being an expert on these types of cases. Angela sat at her desk, drinking her fourth cup of coffee for the day and smoking her last cigarette. She swore she was actually going to quit this time. There was one, maybe two drags left, and she was going to enjoy them, she thought, as she leaned back in her chair and closed her eyes. That's when Chief Potter startled her. You bored, Ange? No. No, sir. I was, I was just... She noticed the man standing next to Chief Potter. He sure didn't fit in around here. In this precinct, you were lucky if someone wore their good boots. Shit kickers and Levi's with a crease still in them. Big belt buckles and a button-up. This was Colorado, not L.A., she thought as she looked this guy up and down. Thousand dollar suit, hundred dollar haircut, more product in his hair than Angie used for her prom. His cufflinks were probably worth more than Angie's car. Holy shit, she thought. How much do they pay to retire from the FBI these days? I'm definitely in the wrong job. She sniffed a little, trying not to be too obvious. He even smells good. Doesn't fit in at all. In fact, she couldn't tell if he was trying too hard to look professional or was just somehow trying to convey that he was better than them. Had more power. She looked in his eyes. Shifty. I don't like him, she finally summed up. Angie, this is Mr. John Spence. He's the guy I told you about used to lead the missing persons unit for the FBI. Spence reached out to shake Angie's hands, and when he did, she noticed that his hands were calloused, like her husband's from driving cattle his entire life. Working hands. Not the kind of hands that would normally be wearing these clothes. He was only about 45 years old or so. She shook his hand, maybe gripped it a little harder than normal. See? I've got power, too, she thought. You don't look old enough to retire, she snapped. I became a private contractor, doing things like this. I just thought that my gifts were better spent helping out folks like Chief Potter, he said as he patted Potter's shoulder and gave a quick wink. Potter was eating this up. Well, if you're ready, I guess we can get started, began Ange as she motioned to an interrogation room. Sorry about the accommodations, she said, as he was pulling her chair out for her. Odd, she thought briefly. He sat in the chair opposite of her. He placed his hands on the table and folded them. His nails are dirty, thought Angie quickly, before Spence began asking her questions. So, Mrs. Barrett... Angela is fine, or Officer Barrett, she broke in. Okay, Angela it is. Tell me about the missing girl. Angie took out a folder, found the picture of Soleil Grand, a 20-year-old college student with big white teeth, blue eyes, and black hair. The picture was her high school graduation photo, so Angie found the other one they had. This was Soleil and her boyfriend Carson Kelly and her best friend Jennifer Pelosi. It was taken the day she went missing from the National Park. She had her hair in a ponytail, jean shorts, a flannel shirt, and Under Armour track shoes. She certainly wasn't dressed to do any climbing or much more than a short hike. She told her two friends that she was going to take a pee and walked a few feet into the forest. Neither Carson or Jenny could see her, and after a few minutes, Jenny called out to her friend. You gonna make it, dude? And there was no reply. They walked in the same direction that Soleil had walked and found where she'd leaned her back up against a tree. There was urine on the ground, but Soleil had been missing for four days now. She just disappeared. Vanished. Spence looked at the photos, 
glanced at the file, then pushed them back towards Angie. So, what's your gut tell you? He asked. Angie gathered the folder. Well, if I had to say what's likely, I'd say that she was pranking her friends and got lost. Okay, said Spence. But... But we found her shoe about 15 miles north of there, and then another one about a mile north of that. Almost like she wanted to leave a sign. Feels wrong to me. So... Do you think someone took her? Maybe, said Angie, realizing that this guy had probably already solved the case and would make it home before dinner. Then he lit a cigarette. He asked Angie if she minded. She didn't, but it made her think about quitting tomorrow instead. Angie, tell me, he began. Then he lit a cigarette. He asked Angie if she minded. She didn't, but it did make her think about quitting tomorrow instead. Angie, tell me, he began. Are you aware that 99% of the internet is unused by your average citizen? 4% is used as something known as the deep web. And 95% of the rest of the internet is the dark web. The dark web is those things that go bump in the night, Angie. Things you don't even want to think about. Things you can't imagine in your worst nightmare. His forehead began to get a few beads of sweat. Have you ever heard that there's close to 2,000 people gone missing from the national parks in this country, Angie? She shook her head. No. Yes, nearly 2,000 people just vanished. That's why I'm here, Angie. It's my specialty. These disappearances. How about this? Do you know that at any given moment in the U.S. there are 90,000 missing people? Angela had no idea, actually. She was taking in the information, but was having trouble even processing those numbers. Well, so, are you saying, Deep Web Ange, people are taken every day, young, old, it doesn't matter, just as long as there's a warm body to sell. Angie snapped from her thoughts. What the actual... I've seen it, Ange. You think... That serial killers don't know each other? You think that they don't have help from people who idolize these folks? Ted Bundy once said, Every serial killer he'd ever met had one thing in common. And what's that, Spence? Asked Angie. That's not the point, Angela. Don't you think it's interesting that he said, Every serial killer he's ever met... How many serial killers have you knowingly met, Angie? None, I think. That's right, Ange, none. But here's Bundy, talking about all the ones he's met. You think that he misspoke? Or that he met other serial killers? You know, shared pictures? Tactics? Methods? I... Uh... She looked down at Spence's pack of Winston's and nodded her head towards it. She'd quit later. I don't know what to say. You don't think that that's what happened here, do you? John Spence leaned back into his chair, casually, taking a long drag off his cigarette. Oh, we may find her. Twenty years from now, under the concrete of some guy's basement. Why have I not heard about this before? Angie said with a bit more snap in her voice than she had intended. Angie, jeez. Would you take your kids to a national park to camp by a lake, maybe fish by a river, put up a tent surrounded by tens of thousands of acres of land and a million ways to get out without ever being seen by a single soul if you knew about this? 
You own a cabin around here, Angie? Yeah. She said slowly. Well, my parents do. We go every year on family vacation. Her voice trailed off. Right. So if you want to keep your job, you're going to go out there and tell no one, right? You're a smart woman, Angie. You know who's keeping this crap secret. Spence reached across the table and took the file back. Shuffled through the papers. Hey, Ange. You mind getting us some coffee while I read up on this? It's going to take a minute. Angie was glad to be able to leave that room for any amount of time. She needed to get some air. By the time she walked into the office, Spence was gone. Carla, Ange called out. Where's Mr. Spence? Oh, he said he needed to use the restroom. By the way, there's a call for you on line five. Angie walked to the wall and picked up the phone. This is Officer Barrett. Again, she began to put together the contents of the folder, but she noticed that there was something missing. Officer Barrett? Yeah. This is John Spence. Can we get together tomorrow? I somehow managed to get two flat tires in my rental car. Can you even believe the luck? Who is this? Angie asked, sounding panicked. The picture of Soleil with her boyfriend and best friend. It wasn't in the folder. John Spence, the voice said. I can't make it until tomorrow. First thing in the morning okay with you? Angie dropped the phone and ran out of the room towards the men's bathroom. She pulled out of her weapon and kicked the door. It swung open. Empty. She quickly turned to run to the parking lot while yelling for backup. She kicked the glass door open, holding her weapon out in front of her. Several of her fellow officers followed up behind her. On the ground was a small white piece of paper. It read, Thanks for everything. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you like my content, please subscribe. And if you'd give this video a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Click that bell so you can be notified of any new content. And if you like my content, please consider supporting this channel through Patreon. The link will be below. Thank you.